discuss Lecture 8-3, Block Diagrams and Feedback Systems, students should be reading Chapter 7 of the course notes. The objectives for today's lecture are that at the conclusion of this lecture, students should be able to apply frequency domain techniques to find the transfer function of a circuit and block diagram, identify the components of a feedback control system, and design a controller to improve the steady state and transient characteristics of a system. As previously stated, the benefit of Laplace transforms is that algebra can be used to find the input-output characteristics of an interconnected system or block diagram. So now we're going to generate the block diagram and the transfer function for such a system. In class activity one, determine the block diagram for the system represented by the following circuit. Here we have three operational amplifiers that are cascaded together. And we can make this a block diagram by noting that the input voltage is VI. And then we have an op amp at the top and an op amp at the bottom. The gain for the op amp at the top, since it's an inverting amplifier, would be negative R1 plus one over SC1 divided by the input impedance 1 over SC2. The op amp at the bottom is also an inverting amplifier, so it's going to be a gain of negative 1 over SC divided by the input impedance, which is RA. The two of these together, then, if we call this signal A and B, go into a summing amplifier that inverts the sum. So we can put the sum first with a plus sign. And then it's multiplied by a gain of negative 1 because the feedback and input impedances on the summer are all the same value. So the output is now VO. So we would have that V naught of S is equal to R1 plus 1 over SC1 divided by 1 over SC2 for the top path plus 1 over SC over RA for the bottom path times VI of S and the transfer function H of S is equal to V naught of S over VI of S which equals R1 plus 1 over SC1 over 1 over SC2 plus 1 over SC divided by RA. Now let's do in-class activity two. Determine the transfer function for the system represented by the following block diagram. This block diagram is actually a standard feedback control system where we have an input R of S and we would like the output to track the input. So coming out of the summer, the plus and minus, we have an error, which we're going to call E of S. And then we design a controller, which is used to control the plant, where the plant could be anything from like a thermostat to a car to your body temperature, etc. The output of the system is Y of S. And in the feedback loop, you sometimes have a sensor to detect how close it is to the actual value. So now we're going to create the transfer function for this. Recall that the transfer function is the ratio of the output Y of S over the input R of S. The first equation is E of S is equal to R of S minus H of S, Y of S. The second equation is Y of S is equal to E of S times GC of S times GP of S. So now substituting equation one into equation two, we get that Y of S is equal to R of S minus H of S y of s times gc of s gp of s solving for y of s we get y of s times one plus gc of s gp of s h of s equals gc of s gp of s r of s and finally, the transfer function, H of S equal to Y of S over R of S is equal to GC of S 
times g p of s divided by one plus g c of s g p of s h of s. This is the standard transfer function for a feedback control system and we use it frequently so I recommend that you memorize it. Feedback control systems are used to control a plant g p of s to track to a certain set point RS or to regulate to a certain value. One common feedback control system is a the thermostat where the sensor H of S is used to detect the room temperature and uses the air to provide a signal to the controller G C of S which adjusts the damper or turns on a heating or air conditioning system Y of S. The human body temperature is an example of a self-regulating control system. There are also open loop control systems but they do not work quite as well because it's difficult to measure the effect of the control signal without feedback. Sometimes a pre-filter, GPF of S, is used for signal condition in the input into a feedback control system in order to reduce steady state error. In class activity three, the following block diagram describes a feedback control system. Determine the value of the pre-filter to have a zero steady state error for an input A U of T. So the transfer function H of S is equal to y of s over r of s and this is going to be g p f times the standard closed loop feedback system that we just arrived recall that this first term 1 over s plus 2 is the controller 3 over s plus 1 is the plant and h of s is the feedback sensor so it's going to be g p f f times g c of s times g p of s over 1 plus g c of s g p of s h of s so from this we get g p f times 3 over s plus 1 times s plus 2 in the numerator and in the denominator we get 1 plus 5 times 3 over s plus 1 times s plus 2. So if we use algebra to simplify this, we get in the numerator 3 GPF and in the denominator we get s plus 1 times s plus 2 plus 15. So the steady state error would be equal to a times 1 minus h of 0 and we have an error input of a so it's just going to be a times 1 minus 3 gpf over 17. Since we want the steady state error to be 0 we set this equal to 0. So we get that 3 gpf over 17 must equal 1 and finally the value of the pre-filter must be equal to 17 over 3. So now if we look at our original transfer function we get that h of s is equal to 3 times 17 over 3 divided by s plus 1 times s plus 2 plus 15 so h of 0 is now equal to 1 and our steady state error does indeed equal a times 1 minus h of 0, it equals 0. The most common types of industrial controls are proportional integral, PI, PD, and PID. If the input to the controller is the error E of T and the output is the control signal U of T, the following table summarizes the controllers. In the first domain, a proportional control in the time domain, a proportional controller just multiplies the error. So you would have that U of T equals the proportional gain KP E of T, or in the frequency domain, that would become U of S equals KP E of S. The integral controller takes a gain and multiplies it by the integral or the change in the error. So U of T would be equal to ki times the integral from 0 to t e of lambda d lambda 
And in the frequency domain, U of S would be equal to KI over S E of S. Proportional integral is the sum of the prior two, so it would be U of T is equal to KP E of T plus KI, the integral from zero to T, E of lambda D lambda. And U of S is equal to KP plus KI over S, the entire quantity multiplied by E of S. Proportional derivative is going to be the sum of the proportional controller plus a derivative controller. So U of T is equal to KP E of T plus KD, the derivative of the error, D, E of T DT, and U of S would be equal to KP plus S KD times E of S. And finally, the last one is a PID, proportional integral derivative controller. So it would be U of T is equal to KP E of T plus KI, the integral from zero to T, E of lambda D lambda, plus KD, the derivative of the error with respect to time. So U of S would be equal to KP plus KI over S plus KDS, E of S. The proportional and or derivative control is used to control or change the transient response of a system, such as the settling time, time to peak, or percent overshoot. The integral control is used to control or change the steady state error. There are typically trade-offs between the characteristics of each of the controllers. In class activity four, Design a peak controller, G C of S equal K P, a proportional controller, to decrease the settling time and steady state error by a factor of two for a system with the following plant. Assume unity feedback and a unit step input. So let's look and see if we had open loop control, which means there's no feedback, the system would look like this. We would simply have an input R of S. It would go through the plant, one over S plus three, and we would have an output y of s. So for an open loop system, we get that the settling time would be four over three seconds because this would be e to the minus three t, so tau is one third. And the steady state error, ess, would be one minus gp of zero. So the steady state error would be two thirds. Now, what if we have a closed loop system without a controller? If we have a closed loop system without a controller, it would look like this. Here's our input, plus and minus. Here's the unity feedback. Here's the plant, one over S plus three. And here's the output, Y of S. We would get that the transfer function, T of S equal to Y of S over R of S, is equal to one over S plus three divided by one plus one over S plus three, which simplifies to one over S plus four. And this one, we'll see that the settling time is one second and the steady state error is equal to one minus T of zero. So the steady state error is one minus one fourth, which is three fourths. So just by adding unity feedback, we've already improved the settling time and we've also made the steady state error worse. So now let's look at how we can use a proportional controller in order to improve performance. Now let's draw the closed loop system with the controller. So now we've got a closed loop system with a proportional controller and the system block diagram looks like R of S. Here's my summer, plus and minus. Here's the unity feedback. Here's the controller, KP, and the plant, one over S plus three, and the output, Y of S, and our feedback. So our closed loop transfer function, G naught of S, equal to Y of S over R of S, is equal to 
KP times one over S plus three divided by one plus KP over S plus three, which simplifies to KP over S plus three plus KP. So first let's design for the settling time. The settling time would be equal to four over three plus KP. Since we want to improve this by a factor of two, we want to go from one second to half a second. And when we solve that for KP, we get that KP must equal five. What about the steady state error? The steady state error ESS is equal to one minus G naught of zero or one minus KP over three plus KP, which equals three over three plus KP. So if we improve the steady state error by a factor of two, it becomes three eighths. And so once again, we get the KP equals five. So the design controller is GC of S equals five. All right, let's do one final example in class activity five. Design a PD controller, proportional derivative controller, GC of S equals KP plus KDS, to decrease the settling time and steady state error by a factor of T2 with a system with the following plant. Assume unity feedback and a unit step input. So first, we have GP of S is equal to five over S squared plus two S plus two. So once again, let's look at the performance for an open loop. So if you have an open loop system, which means there is no feedback, the steady state error would be equal to ESS equals one minus GP of zero, which is one minus five halves. So the steady state error is negative three halves. To find the settling time, you have to rearrange this a little and rewrite it as five over S plus one squared plus one squared. So you know that the characteristic mode is going to have an e to the minus t in it. So the settling time is four times one or four seconds. Now, what if we have a closed loop system with no controller? Let's see what happens then. When we do that, we get T of S is equal to five over S squared plus two S plus two divided by one plus five over S squared plus two S plus two, which simplifies to five over S squared plus two S plus seven. So the steady state error is equal to one minus T of zero, which equals one minus five sevenths or two over seven. And the settling time is once again, four seconds. So the settling time is about the same, but the steady state error did improve by adding unity feedback. So now let's look at the closed loop system with the PD control. Closed loop with PD control First, we have that the closed loop transfer function is G naught of S is equal to five over S squared plus two S plus two times the controller KP plus KDS divided by one plus five over S squared plus two S plus two times the controller KP plus KDS. Using algebra to simplify this, we get a numerator of five times KP plus KDS divided by S squared plus two S plus two plus five times KP plus KDS. And now collecting like terms in the denominator, we get five times KP plus KDS divided by S squared plus 
2 plus 5 KD S plus 2 plus 5 KP. And you can tell by looking at the terms in the denominator that KD will affect the settling time and KP will affect the error. So now let's write expressions for the settling time and the error. Writing G naught of S one more time, I have 5 times KP plus KDS. And using completing the square in the denominator, I have a term S plus 2 plus 5 KD over 2 squared plus some other term squared, which I don't really need to find in order to answer the question about the settling time. So the settling time is going to be 4 times the reciprocal of 2 plus 5 KD over 2. So that ends up being 4 times 2 over 2 plus 5 KD or 8 over 2 plus 5 KD. And since we want to improve the settling time by a factor of 2 and it was 4 seconds, we want this to be 2 seconds. So now we solve for KD and we get that 4 equals 2 plus 5 KD or KD is equal to 2 fifths. So the derivative gain affects the settling time. Now let's find the steady state error. The steady state error is equal to 1 minus g naught of 0 or 1 minus 5 times kp over 2 plus 5 kp, which simplifies to 2 over 2 plus 5 kp. So by improving the steady state error by a factor of 2, we get that we want the steady state error, ESS, which equals 2 over 2 plus 5 kp, to be equal to 2 over 14. Solving for kp, we get 2 plus 5 kp equals 14, or kp equals 12 over 5. So finally, the controller that we designed for GC of S is equal to KP 12 over 5 plus KD times S 2 fifths times S. And this concludes today's lecture on feedback control. Mm -hmm.